The name of my character is, uh, is Joey Cassidy, and he is the brother of Nick Cassidy. Um, can I tell you about Joey? He's, um, he's a guy who has kind of dedicated his life uh, to helping his brother. Uh, that is the first and foremost thing in his mind and his, the motivation of his relationship with this girl he has and his family life. Um, anything that is, you, you know, his academic life or whatever it is, has been completely consumed by uh, his brother and what he needs to do for his brother. Um, I, you know, he's kind of referred to a little bit as a bit of a screw up and kind of someone who isn't necessarily kind of all together and, um, you know, he, he's, a, he's a guy who's a little bit with loose ends, let's say. His girlfriend, his relationship is with this girl called Angie and they have a very kind of, um, frenetic kind of relationship which, uh, I believe is grounded in love and, and admiration for one another, but uh, they go on this heist to prove Nick's innocence, basically. Um, and some of their flurries of relationship trauma kind of comes out at the wrong times and at the wrong, in the wrong moments. Um, so it's a great character to play, it's a lot of fun. Um, for me and Genesis, uh, who plays Angie, the, the girlfriend, you know, it's, it's, it's really the, the suspense and the fun and the kind of action of the film once uh, uh, once Nick is out there on the ledge, you know. So in terms of filming everything, it's been a lot of fun doing most of the physical stuff for the film um, and providing that relief from the very intense kind of uh, uh, story stuff that's happening on the ledge. Who is he? Is he has he lost his mind? Has he lost the will to live? He's. Um, He's lost touch with the reality. His relatives don't even recognize him anymore. His re you know, they're getting into fights at their father's funeral. I mean, the device of that setup, I really believe, is to try and make you second guess Nick's motivations and, and what he's actually doing. I, I, I genuinely, genuinely believe that you know, by page 20, when he's out there on the ledge and everything's established and set up, you still want to be asking the question, is he going to jump? Is he a bad guy? What's he doing there? And I think... Um, in terms of playing those scenes, it's incredibly difficult, of course, because you know what the device is for, and you know um, that all of this might be a setup. Uh, so, in terms of the playing of it, um, it was kind of, it was kind of complicated. I think every scene needs to feel that way. You really feel like you need, you need to be on the edge. It needs to be like if we don't do this now, we're gonna we're gonna go down. We're gonna be in prison. You know, I, I think Asga, our director, you know, keeps on reminding us of those stakes. You know, the whole time we're, we're busting into this place. I think I'm sure he did the same for Sam. You know, who is literally six inches away from death. You know, uh, uh, and I feel like it's also the delivery of information is is important as well for for things like this. I think. Too often in thrillers and in, in suspense thrillers, when information is given to you, the, the the right reaction is, "Wow, I had no idea," or "That totally threw me for a loop," or "They got me," you know. Um, and too often it, it isn't that reaction. So I think, in terms of the screenplay and at least the way I'm trying to do everything, is um, making sure that that information is delivered in the precise way so that it does offer you that reaction. The comms, these things, comms, uh, I, I essentially know the character in the film. Um, they're the vital link between uh, what's going down and uh, the next step. So I'm constantly a step ahead, Nick is kind of always a step behind what's happening, so I'm constantly having to relay information. Um, but I remember in the rehearsal period, it was always, we were always trying to manifest scenes and dialogue that would be very clear for one context and also very clear for another context. Uh, Nick's conversations with Lydia uh, and its cryptic messages to me, you know. Um, so that, that stuff has been a lot of fun. Uh, and you can add so much tension through these things, these things not working, interference from something else, you know, it's suddenly it's really loud all of a sudden. Um, and we've been playing with all, all that kind of stuff, which I think really, really, really enables everything.
it's definitely a small space. I mean, even when you know when you think about a ledge, it's like okay, it's it's not going to be too bad. It's not going to be that bad. But I mean, he's literally out there. He's on the edge. You know, I mean, it's it's one false move and that's it. You know. Um, so I mean, I think I, I would have loved to have done it. You know, I mean, it, it is incredibly informative. It does throw things at you that you never expected. Um, you know, I, I think they they had pretty good weather while they were shooting as well, which they were very fortunate for. He's a very classic bad guy, you know. He, he represents evil in all kind of different various forms of wealth and capitalism and, 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 and thievery and, and guilt and all these things that are great themes and Ed Harris plays him brilliantly because he's right on the edge of you kind of like him, which is always great. He has a great first scene, one of the best scenes in the film, I think. Um, and he's played him straight down the line, totally believable, you know. Um, so I enjoyed my scene with him as well. That was, uh, that was a lot of fun. So England is, is just, he's the root of this problem. And, and Joy thrives on the idea that when he completes this, then there will be a possibility that they will meet and he will sort some stuff out. I think Asger approaching this film, you know, which I thought was a great decision for him to direct the film, um, having seen his documentary um, which is fantastic I, I, I think the, the backbone of the tale for him is family um, you know uh, that f for, for at least joy that's the driving force of, of the whole mission um, so yeah absolutely I mean the documentary does make you go that's not real uh, so I think Asger is con uh, consciously aware of, of of the fact that breaking into this guy's player, stealing the, one of the biggest diamonds in the world, is a little bit kind of like, it's a large concept, high concept story. But if you can portray it and root it to something that is real, family, love, um, honor, all of those things that my character's going through while trying to do this, it does make it real.